One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five. Hi, what am I doing? I am trying to measure, calculate the value of veterinary medicine. How do we calculate that? How do we measure that? How do we see that? What is the value of veterinary medicine? Is value only uh, sort of simulated by numbers? How much money you earn? How much money you save? What sort of value are we giving? Um, today, I'm very, very excited to be presenting a 10-part series on my take on the value of veterinary medicine. In this series, I'll be discussing different aspects that relate to the value of veterinary medicine. We'll be answering questions like, how are vets valued in this country? Are they perceived as animal magicians or animal doctors? Are they a friend or a foe? Are vets special or just underglorified doctors? Do they provide value for what they do? Or are they simply money grabbing people? Are they expensive? Are they value for money? How do we value vets? Are they really profitable? Do they charge too much? Do they really care about your pet? Or just because they like to work with animals? How do vets provide value? Are they able to provide value only when your pet is sick? How else can they provide value when your pet is well? We'll be also answering questions like, is being a vet really like as depicted in James Herod books? Why can't vets be cheaper? It's only animals. Is out of hours provision really as demanding as it seems? Or are just, uh, or vets just wimpy and moaning needlessly? My animal is not well and I can't afford treatment. Why did a vet not treat my pet? How do you feel about a vet? So these are the different topics we're going to discuss over the next 10 weeks. I hope you enjoy them. Please comment below if there's anything else to add. If not, here we go. The first part of the series, we're going to talk about the problem of the concept of medical value in UK. So in UK, there simply isn't a concept. Due to the amazing existence of the NHS, the majority of people in UK do not possess a poor concept of medical cost or value. Instead, they possess no concept of medical cost and value. Please do not misunderstand, I have nothing against the NHS. In fact, I love the NHS as it has provided me much help and assurance in times when I used it. It certainly provides a peace of mind knowing that our medical needs are covered. However, as it exists, it means the public does not understand how much it costs to provide a medical service. No prices or costs are ever discussed usually. There has been abuse of usage. It's all paid by the government, that is, taxpayers' money. For example, pet owners may moan when a vet consult is £50, especially if only advice has been sought and no treatment is needed. They fail to understand that when you see a GP for an NHS appointment, the cost is £150, and sometimes the consultation may be very short, no medication is prescribed, and we get a peace of mind that all is well. That still costs £150. In veterinary medicine, there are times where no treatment is needed and advice is given, but the perception of not receiving any physical treatment, whether in forms of injections or tablets, no value can be perceived, and some owners, not all, may question the fee charge as nothing was done at all. Another perfect example will be hip replacements. A hip replacement for a dog or cat may range between four and a half, six thousand pounds, usually depending on size. That may seem like a hefty sum for some, but if only they knew that it cost the NHS 15,000 pounds for a hip replacement in a human. As we know, hip replacements are considered to be a fairly standard procedure with approximately 130,000 procedures being done each year and the number is rising. Arguably, hip replacements in dogs and cats are more difficult as not only the bones are smaller and more delicate, more range of sizes has to be stopped for the size difference. 
Also, vets do not have the luxury of the economies of scales. That means the cost per implant may be more as a smaller number compared to human implants are manufactured. All these factors should make the cost of hip replacements in pets much higher or at least similar to those in humans, but instead it is about a third of the price. This is despite using similar anesthetic equipment, similar training and similar implants. Isn't that interesting? It is not the fault of anyone for the lack of information. My personal suggestion would be for NHS to provide the patients and their families using their service with the invoice. I'm not saying they have to pay, but just to allow them to appreciate what the treatment had just cost. Surely it's better to educate us how much medical cost. Perhaps it may even allow more appreciation for this marvelous health, uh, this health system and will not take it for granted. Just a thought for those who would like to find out more, please do Google it and compare with your vet bills. Where is, who, who is more expensive? What is being done? Do we actually know what medical value is before we say something is too expensive? Very interesting thought. Please do comment below what you perceive as vet bills are like and whether you have any experience with your medical bills and um, whether there's a vast difference or not.